My name is Antonio Laina and I'm the founder of Caviers Labs. Today I would like to cover three things. First, give you a refresher on the web architecture and why we need to synchronize many web app instances in real time. Second, I'm going to give you a minimalist example that uses Caviers to do just that. And finally, we are going to deploy the example in the Caviers cloud using our tools. With the web architecture, we split the functionality of a collaborative app in two layers. The topmost layer is transparent and it contains the video and audio components that are typically implemented using WebRTC APIs. The background layer contains your application logic and is a, a web application that we call WAP. WAPs run everywhere and this allows us to delay the merge of these two layers until the video hits the endpoint. This has many advantages that we have covered somewhere else but unfortunately introduces the complexity of synchronizing the video with all these WAPs. So for example, if we switch the, the slide, we want to make sure that all the web instances are actually showing the correct slide. Let me give you an example of how to do that. Let's build and run the Hello World example that comes with the release. And now with Caviers Run, we also give it the name Hello World. And what this command is doing is spawning several Docker containers. So for example, the Redis container provides your application with a checkpointing service. Accounts helps you to authenticate your users. Gadget helps you to manage devices. NetProxy is just simply an HTTP router. And something that is important is that your application will always run in a generic container. A container that just simply maps your home directory and you don't need to create a new container image every time that you, you change your application. And that speeds up development drastically. So let's now connect to one of these instances that are running locally. The suffix bigup.me just resolves to the IP address of the local host. Now we can sign up with the default user called foo and the default password called bar. And let's create an instance of the application that we are running. We are going to call this instance xx. And what this does is creates a counter that is periodically incremented by a, an autonomous cloud assistant. Cloud assistants typically will be running in the cloud, but here, of course, everything is, is done locally. A cloud assistant is also stateful, and in this case, it maintains a list of five elements that contains the last values of the counter that were multiple of five. We can also change the value of the counter or, or even reset it to zero. But something more interesting is to synchronize this counter with the counter of a different user. So let's create another user account. We are going to call this user Joe. And with a fake email address, joe at bigup.me. And when we are running locally, there is no validation of email addresses. So we just get the passcode right away. Mm -hmm. 
now we can also create an instance of the hello world counter that we are going to call y1 and what we are going to do is to link this counter to the previous counter Now you can see that the, the value is actually tracking the previous counter. So if we increment whose counter, automatically we also increment Joe's counter. But if we try to change Joe's counter, eventually the count will go back to the original value of foo. Um, what happens if we try to link Foo's counter with Joe's counter? At this point, what happens is that there is a, a cycle and therefore there is not going to be any updates because there is a deadlock. So the system has to realize that there is a a deadlock and then reset at least one of these counters that are involved in the loop. So in this case, the one that was reset was the one from Joe. The cloud backend is only about 100 lines of code. In KBES, we define a cloud assistant by creating a mixing of methods. And these methods are asynchronous and they always return an array where the first element of the array is an optional error and the second element is an optional data that we return to the caller. We have two types of methods. Internal ones have this funny prefix of underscore underscore CA and external ones are all the others. Now, internal ones can only be called by the framework itself or using the trusted bus. And on the other hand, the external ones can be called by the client library. Let's look at the core internal ones. First, we have an init method that what it's going to do is just initialize the counter and the notification list. And it's also ensure that we are not following anybody and we don't have any pending timeouts. It will also do a little bit more of setup, for example, defining the name of the channel that we are going to use for publish subscribe, always based on our own name. There's also the, the method called resume and resume is called every time that we restart the cloud assistant. And here, the only thing we have to do is if we have a pending timeout, we update it. The function pulse is periodically called by the framework. And depending on whether we are following someone or not, we do different behavior. So if we are following, we just check that we don't have a, a cycle. And if we do, we just reset. On the other hand, if we are not following, we keep on incrementing the counter. Every time we update the counter, we call this update impulse function. And this update impulse, the only thing it's doing is just maintaining the notification list with the last five values of the counter that were multiple of five. And then it will use the session plugin to notify all the clients of this cloud assistant that there is a new value. To do that, it uses app session and app session is a regular expression that matches the session name as long as it is prefixed by the word user. And then it will use the PubSub plugin to notify other cloud assistants that are interested on our channel that we have a new counter. 
how do we actually follow someone? So it's very straightforward. We just have to subscribe to the to the channel name, and we use that with this function called ta handle counter. And handle counter will be called every time that we receive a message, and we'll just simply update the counter with a new value in that message. We have other methods that are kind of straightforward to unfollow, reset, and get a state. And, and we all are also using proactive service uh, rendering, as you can see here from the React plugin. The front end is just a straightforward React Redux application. We only have a couple of things that are unusual. The first thing is we have to create a session object to connect to the Cloud Assistant. And we are going to provide a session name that has a prefix user and some random string so that it doesn't collide with other clients, but it still matches the regular expression that we described a moment ago. And then when we connect, the first thing we do is we call init to download the state from the Cloud Assistant and initialize the local Redux store with it. Then we also have a handler called onMessage that whenever we receive a notification from the Cloud Assistant, we will just update the store. And in the other direction, we have to define a bunch of methods for, that match the methods in the Cloud Assistant for increment, follow, unfollow, get state, and reset. And these methods would just simply use the asynchronous interface to call the method in the Cloud Assistant and then update the store or return an error. So how many counters can we synchronize? Before we can talk about scalability, we need to talk about latency. And in this case, we have good news because we don't have to overrun the bear. As long as we are faster than WebRTC, we are fine. And WebRTC for large groups will add hundreds of milliseconds of latency. So let's focus on, let's say, a 200 millisecond budget. The PubSub plugin uses Redis for its backend. And this means that we can have hundreds of Node.js processes hosting your application. And you don't have to create them. With the Cap.js cloud, we flex resources based on the number of cloud assistants. So we will manage these processes for you. The plugin also demultiplexes messages for hundreds of local CAs in a process. So that means that the maximum number of subscribers that already sees is the number of processes, not the number of cloud assistants. And we can also amortize one cloud assistant update over tens of clients connected to it. So this means we can synchronize hundreds of thousands of clients with a single ready systems. And when we add sharding and multiple ready replicas, we will get to millions, updating every second and with most latencies under 200 milliseconds. So what about security? By default, only the owner can call CAE methods. But here we are opening the handle counter method to everybody. But this is an internal method that can only be called by using the trusted bus. So this, this means that whenever the handle counter executes, we will have authenticated inputs, both for the topic and the message. And since the topic is private and is coped with the CA name, we know that the message can only be sent by this, that CA. So this means that this simple check is all we need to guarantee that we are getting the right counter value. This is a straightforward use case of the trusted bus, but built-in policy mechanisms are very flexible. And please have a look at other examples in the documentation. And what happens if the server crashes? This other state is checkpointed in Redis before externalizing any of its changes. So if we crash and restart, the recovery state will be what everybody expects. 
the magic to achieve this is in the transactional plugins like session or PubSub that delay externalization until there is a checkpoint. So let's crash the local instance and see what happens. To do that, we just control C twice and that forces a hard reset. So now you can see that there is no containers left. And what we are going to do is to just restart everything again. Let's have a look at what is happening with the was retrying for a while and eventually reconnected. And on the other hand, the other one actually lost the connection. So if we reload, and sign back again, go to the counter example, we see it has the, the previous values and it has synchronized fine. And now both are actually following each other again. The last thing I want to show you is how to upload your application to the KBS Cloud. So the first thing to do is to create a container image with your application. And now we, we just upload the image to the Docker repository. That has to be a public one so that we can actually run your code. Let's log in in the KBS Cloud. And let's use desktop three and that is empty. And the first thing we are going to do is to register this new app. So we have to choose a name and then a plan that decides how many extra resources we, we give to each new cloud assistant. And also we have to choose the, the profit. The profit is the percentage of the revenue that is going to be profit for you. And the combination of plan and profit will give you a price. Prices are always in days that the cloud assistant will be running for one unit. I, one unit is about 10 cents plus cost. So this means that with 10 cents, one of your customers will have one of these counters running for more than a month. And now we are going to bring a, an instance of the Turtles de deployer. That is a program that we use to, to create our applications. So what we will do now is, is to just simply add the counter name that is the one that we have registered before. And we are going to use the, the same name for, for, for the image that you have just created. We don't have a configure a CDN and something that is actually highly recommended for production. And then we start the app. And hopefully in a few seconds, you will see the okay of number of units to be green, meaning that we are live. 
in the meantime let me show you how you can try to predict whether the plan that you have chosen is was the right one so after a day we collect some statistics of usage of your app and then we can create graphs like like this in which we provide information about what is the the resources in CPU and memory that we are providing for your app, both for Redis and for the Node.js instance, and what percentage of, of these resources you are actually using. And based on that, you can decide whether the plan that you had is the right one or, or you would prefer to use a different plan. Let's see whether we are up. Still working on it. And now we are up. So now let's create an instance of, of this new application. The publisher is, is me. The name is counter. And just give it any name. And now we have a counter. But anybody now could actually create instances of this application. And when they do so, they will actually give you some units. Units that you can transfer to other users for real cash using the people app. Let me summarize what we have seen today. We first look at the web architecture and its need of synchronizing many web app instances in real time. Then we look at a very simple example written in KVJS that explains how to perform this synchronization. We deploy locally, we look at the code, and then we highlight three important properties, scalability, security, and reliability. Then we did a, a quick demo of a crash restarting the app locally. And then finally, we deploy the app in the KVS cloud. There's much more information in our website. The example is in GitHub. And you can sign up to the KVS cloud for free without needing a credit card. We would love to hear from you. Thanks for listening.